All right. It's time for Showtime. First, welcome and thank you everyone for joining us. My name is Makita Bacard and I am an admissions coach at IPEG. And we have today with us Don Whittle from the ICF. Looking forward to just asking questions uh, and, and just getting some insight about the ICF. I know that's like a popular question on, on my end. So, so welcome and, and thank you for, for joining us today. If you have any questions, please put them in the question and answer box and not in the chat box. I want to make sure that everyone's question is asked. So remember in the question and answer and not in the chat box. And without further ado, I think it's best to start with Don. If you can just give us a little bit of introduction about who you are and how you ended up at ICF. Well, that's a great question. Thanks, Makita. I'm Don Whittle. I'm the membership director at the International Coaching Federation. Um, we are the professional association uh, for coaches worldwide, uh, currently at around 56,000 members in over 140 countries around the world. We have a credentialing uh, program with uh, just about, I want to say, 45,000 members in just as many countries around the world. And I've been here, gosh, it's going to celebrate uh, 15 years here at the International wow. Coaching Federation. In July, really big proponents, very strong proponent uh, of this profession. So excited to be here today. Yeah, yeah. And, and Don, this is, this is like one of my favorite questions to ask. Now, are you a coach? I am not a coach. And let me just be clear. Yeah. Um, so the reason I'm not a coach is I'm much more of an administrator. But at the same time, one of the uh, one of the great benefits to working here is I have my own personal coach. And this gentleman is excellent, world class, without a doubt. And uh, the insights I gain from our coaching engagement that we have every two weeks is, I, I can't even tell you how valuable it is for me. I, I, loved, I love that you said that and, and your perspective. And, and then the fact that you've been there for 15 years. So it just speaks volumes uh, about the impact. So if you can actually talk a, a little bit about like how the ICF started and its purpose. So uh, the ICF was founded uh, about 27 years ago, um, and, and I'm not going to say who founded it because that's probably too controversial because <laughs> it's probably been uh, numerous people who are pioneers um, in the coaching movement, um, and it was pretty much birthed out of um, um, a s um, psychological background, but just his morphed and moved and um it's set up if you will our membership is around um um 60 hours of coach specific training uh, taught in accordance with the 11 core competencies code of ethics and our definition of what we call um coaching um and it has grown over the years um since then to where we are today as i said before with the number of members around the world and credential holders and we are the we we claim um, to be the professional association for coaching. And we did, and just to put it in perspective about IPEC, because I'm a big proponent of IPEC coaching and what they've done for the profession as well, which I think is enormous. Um, I know they have uh, great training, great trainers. Uh, they've got a global footprint and it's increasing. I really love that. Um, and I think that uh, more and more people who are coming into coaching are only going to, this is a, this is a stretch here, but I'm going to say this, uh, are going to make the world a better place <laughs> because you. of coaching. Thank you. And, and just so you know, we did not pay Don to say no, this. No, <laughs> I am not getting paid for this. So, no, no, um, no, but no, thank, thank you so much for, for, for your words. And one of the questions that, that I get often is, there's so many different coach training programs, um, education and training. Why is it important to go to a coach training school that is accredited by the ICF? Yeah. So uh, the reason it's really important is because we definitely have our own definition of coaching. And I know we're all in a line um, with that here um, at IPEC and all the training programs that ICF accredits um, because the the, the definition of what it is and what it's become today, it's really resonating globally around the world where uh, more and more people 
have a knowledge of what coaching is and what it's not. I can also say what it's not. It's not therapy. I'm not here to uh, disparage therapy by any means. And it's not consulting either. It's not, hey, let me tell you, um, you know, how to do this. This is much more about listening and following the core competencies. And it's just a real refreshing way where um, people can grow to reach their own potential um, through the coaching process. So I'm excited to, to, to say that. Now, speaking of um, the ICF and credentials, what are the different levels of credentialing through the ICF? So we have three different um, um, credentials at ICF. And the first is the ACC credential, which is, if you will, the introductory level, 60 hours of coach-specific training and some other requirements. Uh, one piece is a, um, um, a CKA. It's called Coach Knowledge Assessment. It's an exam. Uh, PCC is the next level up, 125 hours of uh, coach-specific training hours, 500 hours of coaching experience with clients. Uh, and I'm just uh, moving through quickly. And then the yeah. MCC level, which is 2,500 hours uh, of coaching experience. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to butcher this here. So I've just got to look up in my, my notes right here. Here it is. Uh, sorry, I, I was wrong. 200 hours of coach specific training. I'm I knew I'd, I'd, I'd confuse that with the 25 hours are 2,500 hours of the coaching experience hours uh, that you have to earn. And also the CK is included in that and some uh, performance evaluations where you're being assessed by uh, outside assessors um, that your coaching meets our standards and you're coaching this at this specific level. So um, it's exciting uh, with the number of credential holders that are um, um, out there around the world. I can say this um, and uh, because it's documented, uh, we mm -hmm. do a lot of research with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Uh, global, um, a global coaching study was done in 2020. Uh, we've got a global consumer awareness study that was done in 2022. Um, all that information is available on our website, and you can, as members, can get the executive summaries. But coaching is here; it's here to stay. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have a credential, it's kind of another level up where you've been verified, validated, there's rigor in the process, and uh, more and more people, and more and more, let me back up and say, more and more end users are okay. asking if um, you as a coach um, are credentialed. So yeah, it's important. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And I have a, a question in, in the chat sure. from Jim. Thank you so much, Jim, for your question. And I've heard that the ICF certification test is about to change. Can you tell us anything about that, what those changes look like and how to best study for it? Um, I'm going to say keep looking at the website. I know it's going to change on August 1st of this year. It's going to be called the credentialing exam. Mm -hmm. um, and there's going to be uh, in-person testing, as well as we're going to stay with the virtual. I can't give you the exact number of uh, questions that are on the exam, anything like that. Uh, anything as specific as that. But yes, it is changing and it's going to be um, administered by Pearson View. Um, so we're excited about it. I think it's just one more change. And it's since I've started and watched credentialing evolve, it is, it's been a real treat to see where they've come from mm -hmm. and where they are now. Um, it's just the process is, is so great and it's, uh, it's got so much more rigor to it. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm very, um, hopeful of the future where there's going to be a lot of, a lot more credential coaches around the world. So. Awesome. Awesome. Jim, I hope that answers your question, but, but let us know, um, if you need any more clarity, uh, there's another question and it just popped up. What's the best way to prep and study for the CKA? especially the new version. So this, right. And so you can go to the website at um, coachingfederation.org. And as you click through any of the credentials um, uh, and scroll down just a bit, there's more information about the CKA and you can open it up. There's some sample questions there. Um, and there's, it, so if, as long as you're familiar and studying 
um, the core competencies, code of ethics, and our definition of uh, coaching, you should be fine in terms of the current exam, the CKA, and when it's going to become, um, it's going to be called the credential exam. So you'll be fine. Ebony, I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Next question is from Anne. If you have a health and wellness coaching credential, is it possible to take advanced classes with the ICF? Love that. I get that question often. So we, um, j just to be clear, ICF uh, Global, uh, the association does not, um, we don't, we're not in, the, um, uh, we don't provide coach training. We accredit coach training schools, just mm -hmm. like IPEC, which I'm on this call today and can't say <laughs> enough about. Um, so I would seriously consider taking a look at what IPEC has to offer. And I'm not, I'm going to turn it back to um, Akita for that. Uh, uh, for more information on how to contact um, IPEC and and get in touch with them. Thank you. Yep. And at the the end, towards the end of our program or our webinar, I'll give you some details on how we can have more of a conversation. But to Anne's question, um, if someone is certified somewhere else and they want to get credentialed um, without going to a coach training program, is that possible? Um, so I can't answer that. Uh, so that so there are prerequisites in terms of you have to have completed coach specific training that meets our standards. And I would encourage you to go uh, to coachingfederation.org and look at those eligibility requirements um, for the credential. Yeah, because it's um, if it's an alternative path, it's a whole bunch of other sets of steps that you would have to complete. Um, so the website gives the best uh, information and to to answer that that question. But thank you so much. Um, I have an anonymous question that says I have enough hours for the ACC test. What are the benefits or the downside of taking the ACC before August 1st? I don't see any downside at all. I mean, uh, the CKA is uh, the current um, credentialing exam is, as far as I know, not a radical departure for the new the new one that's coming. Um, you know, it's still the it's still taught um, uh, core competencies, code of ethics, and um, uh, definition of coaching. So I think you're going to be fine. I don't think there is a downside to it. I think mm -hmm. there's only an upside. Whenever whenever you're ready and ready to apply, I would encourage you to go do it. And don't, um, now I'm going to be, I'm, I'm channeling my own coach. Like, don't <laughs> procrastinate. Like, That's why right. are you doing it now? I'm like, <laughs> sorry. Forward the action. That's right, Dad. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Don't Just put do it, it off. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Thank you so much for that question. And, and Michelle has a just a clarifying question regarding the numbers of hours that's required for each credential. Um, I know that's on the, the website. It's yeah, the it's on the it's on the website. And I would encourage you just to go on there and take a look at those hours um, that are required there for, for not only the coach training hours, but also the coaching experience. So the client hours, hours as well. Yeah, it just gives, and at the end, we'll, we'll give a, the link where you mm -hmm. can access more of the information. Um, and another great question coming in. Thank you guys all for the, the questions. Great questions um, from Shabnam. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Can you explain uh, the difference between volunteer hours versus paid hours? Yeah, so volunteer is more pro bono coaching hours, and there's a certain percentage that you can submit um, in terms of your uh, credential application. And I also want to make sure when you're saying volunteer, it's not we're not confusing peer coaching hours. So if I'm mm. doing bartered coaching, if Makita and I are doing bartered coaching, I'm coaching her in exchange for her coaching me, and we're that's an agreement. Um, and we're doing it, if you will, for free, but we're both giving time to each other uh, to coach each other. That would count as well toward uh, paid coaching hours. Uh, I think that's a great clarification yeah. um, question. Thank you for that, Don. And, and again, on the website, if you just needed more information for each credential, there's a different requirement for paid versus volunteer hours. So the website will be the best place to see the difference yeah. between the three. Thank you so much for that question. Uh, Will, 
how do I determine if the 60 hours of coach training that I received is from an ICF accredited coach? Awesome question. So, uh, and, and it would be an accredited coach training program. Okay. And um, if you go to coachingfederation.org and go under credentials and standards tab, which is up there, um, there is a, a sub tab that's find education. So I'd click that uh, mm -hmm. and look up your training program and see if it's listed there. If it is, and it's designated ACTP or ACSTH, um, it is accredited. Since you just used those acronyms, what's the difference? Yeah. <laughs> so the, the ACTP uh, designation, which is changing, and I don't want to go too far down here because it's a lot of acronyms and I'll yeah. lose people um, <laughs> in this, these descriptions, and I apologize. That's not the okay. intent here. Uh, but ACTP uh, training, which IPEC has a great ACTP training program, um, is very comprehensive. It includes, um, you know, uh, the, the right number of uh, coach training hours, uh, but also there's um, uh, mentoring done, there's performance evaluation, and there's an exam. And all of that in that certified process makes it an ICF accredited or ACTP training program. The um, ACSTH, which uh, is also accredited, but that's more about um, approved coach specific training hours that are out there um, that are offered by uh, training programs. That's a, a great clarification because one of the questions that I often explore with uh, prospects that's considering a coach training program is how to choose between the two. And, and it really boils down to like a, a personal preference and sure. what type of experience you want out of a program so you can get a fully comprehensive experience that it entails everything, or you can get something that's just really focused on coach training hours. So it, it's really about what what is important to you and what you really want to get out of the program. So thank you for, for clarifying the distinction between the two. Sure. Uh, thank you, Will, for that great question. And then we have Tiffany. For those who become credentialed before the new test, will they be required to retake the new test or grandfathered in? Um, only if you're elevating to another credential. So if you're going up and you haven't taken the new test, you would have to go and, and take it that then. Yeah. And if you take it now, you wouldn't have to take it then if you're elevating up. And I got to watch that because I, it's a gray area and I don't want to, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to say the wrong thing. Cause I'm going to say, Hey, that guy on ICF who, Down you know, a little. <laughs> said this and yeah. yeah. Always yeah. go to uh, uh, go to the website and and look that piece up. But I am ninety nine percent sure that's the case. If you take uh, this, the the new CE, um, you shouldn't have to take it again if you elevate your credential. But if if you're already a credential holder, yes, you would have to take the new CK. I'm sorry, the new CE um, in August. It's and and let me say that if you reach out to the ICF, they will get back to you. They're super responsive yeah. because it's a lot of information and things that are is. in the middle of, of training. But anytime that I've just reached out just to get clarification on what does this mean? Can, can this qualify for that? They're super responsive. So the website and contacting them, they will definitely get back to you. Yeah. Okay, sure. so thank you guys for that. So we talked a lot about um, credentialing. Oh, hold on. Before I get to that question, let me make sure I answer Ebony's question that came in. Uh, do we have to take the exam over every year or every two years? No, you do not. No. 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 So it would be a one time. I, and I'm, I'm just going to talk about CE, which is going to happen in August. Um, it, as long as you take it, you take it one time, and even if you – so if it's for the ACC and two years or three years later, you elevate to the PCC level, you've already taken the uh, credentialing exam, and you're good to go. And then I know with some, there's like continuing education. Um, so there are requirements for renewing a credential, and that is 40 hours of continuing education uh, units. Um, 
uh, three of which have to be in, um, uh, sorry, 24 of which need to be in core competencies. The balance can be in uh, professional development, um, a personal development. And three of the hours in, in, um, in the core competencies need to be in um, ethics training, which we yeah. offer free ethics uh, training sure. for three hours on, on the website. Nice. And then going back to when you're researching programs, see if they offer continuing education. Like yeah. I know Tech plug <laughs> does yeah, offer it's continuing a great, education it's a great thing. Um, for all our students that, that will support credentialing in the future. So that's another great thing. All Absolutely. the questions um, we have. Ebony wants to ask a question. Yeah, you can try to unmute Ebony and let's see if we can hear you. Ebony? It's Hang on one second, guys. Let me see if I can unmute her from my end. Mm. Okay. Let's see if we can try to unmute you. One second, Ebony. Go ahead, Ebony. Hi. Thank you for unmuting me. It just would have been a lot to type, so I figured I would just <laughs> say it. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much. So just to clarify, so you're saying if you have the ACC and then you want to transition to getting the PCC, is there another exam that you have to take or is it just the hours that you need to submit, et cetera? Well, so, okay, but let's put the exam off to the side here. If you have an ACC credential and you're going to elevate to PCC, you need to make sure you've got the required training hours um, and coaching experience hours to move up to that level. So mm -hmm. y you can use all your ACC um, um, uh, training um, and um, um, uh, coaching experience hours, but yeah, you need to take a look at that uh, in terms of what's needed for the next level. And the CKA, if you, if you have an ACC now, and you applied for the PCC in, um, uh, after August, you'd have to take the new credential exam as well as part of that. And there may be some other requirements as well. So you want to take a look at that uh, because there's some, it depends what path you came in on for your ACC credential in terms of what's transferable up to the next PCC level of, um, of uh, credentialing. Okay, thank you. And then for the ACC to keep that current, it would be the continued education. Correct. Piece. Yes. And there's a right. And, and, and there's a little bit more than that as well. Uh, if you're renewing that, and you're an ACC credential holder, you're renewing the creden ACC credential, there is some uh, mentor coaching uh, requirements of 10 hours as well. Okay, thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, Ebony. Um, and then there's a question from Jim that asks, that does IPEC have continuing education classes for students who didn't go through the program? And, and the question is, no, it's only for our graduates, um, students that, that can attend our continuing education courses. Um, one other question that I, that I wanted to also ask you, I know we talked a lot about credentialing, but there is life at ICF after credentialing. What does kind of membership look like being a part of the ICF community? Yeah, so our membership, as I said, was 56,000 strong. We have 100, uh, 140 chapters around the world that offer um, volunteer engagements where you can get involved in the board. Uh, there's pro bono coaching opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of professional development um, that's occurring as well at chapters. And what every, everything that ICF also offers, which is uh, we do a lot of professional development here. Uh, we have a biannual conference. The next one is um, next August in Orlando, Florida, which is just all world-class speakers coming in and a lot of unbelievable uh, coaches who are delivering presentations. Um, we've got a lot uh, to offer in terms mm -hmm. of uh, professional development. I know you guys, you guys, I apologize. Uh, I, I know that uh, uh, IPEC has their own um, 
certification process as well. And I know you use a um, uh, Credly as your uh, credential digital badge. We have creden- not only credential digital badges here for each of the credentials, but also membership digital badges all issued by Credly. Um, these things are everywhere in uh, social media and people using it on their uh, email signatures. And they're just wonderful ways to to say you're part of the community and and stand out that you're right. a you're a credential holder or you're an IPEC certified coach. You just actually taught me something new because I didn't know as a member I can also have that. So Absolutely. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be reaching out to the ICS. You better be. Yeah. <laughs> you better Thank be. You. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have time for one more question. Um, Camila. Camila asks if she can be unmuted. Hi, Camila. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, thank you for unmuting me. Thank uh, you. My question is my question is related with Ebony's question uh, because I'm also curious. Uh, IPEX program qualifies you for the PCC in terms of the number of hours. Uh, so, for example, if I first apply for the ACC and then I want to be elevated to the PCC, since I already uh, have completed IPEX program, it means that I already qualify for the PCC hours, correct? So all I need is just uh, the coaching hours. I wanted to make sure that uh, this is how I understand it. Uh, I mean, that my understanding is correct. You would be correct because with uh, our our program, we give you more than enough coach training hours for the highest level of the ICF credentials. So it literally is just a matter of putting in your coaching hours that you can start right after the first class. So, yep, you're on track, Camilla. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. And oh, okay. Let me see if I could fit in one more question Um, from Dustin. Would you only recommend programs that are credentialed through the ICF, IPEC, IPEC, IX, since some programs offer the certified professional career coach via the Professional Association of Resume Writers and Career Coaching? So I don't know about them. I can't speak to that, but I would say, yeah, you want to go to an accredited ICF program if you're going to become a, uh, a member of the ICF and no better program. I'm going to say it than IPEC. I'm going to drop the mic after that. How's that? Drop the mic. <laughs> I think that's a great way. That's a great way, way to end it. Thank you. Amen to that. We're doing it. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you everyone for attending. If there's any questions that, that weren't answered, please feel free to reach out to us in the chat box. You'll have um, ICS contact information. If you want more information about being a certified coach and want to talk more about IPEC and how that looks for you, there'll be information in the chat box. So you can see, speak to someone just like me, an admissions coach, to support you in your journey. But Donna, thank you so much for taking out the time. I look forward to the next one. And thank you everyone for joining us and visit us next week for our Coaches In session where we sit down with a certified coach from IPEC. Awesome. Thanks, Makita. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye.